Season 5, Episode 1, Live Free or Die. We're finally here, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to review Season 5 of Breaking Bad, or as the Webster Dictionary defines it, Peak Fiction. We start off with a callback to the very first episode of the show, with Walt rearranging his bacon to the number 52. Whoa, what happened there? It's my birthday. That's not Walt. What is it with Breaking Bad and Denny's? Like, whenever these characters need to eat, their first thought is always, Oh, let's go to Denny's. Denny's is painfully average. It is not good. Go to Waffle House. I know there's a much stronger likelihood that you'll get shot there, but it doesn't matter. You get dinner and a show. Anyways, a disheveled looking Walt claims that he's coming from New Hampshire and meets with an arms dealer from last season to get a machine gun. What's he gonna do with it? We'll find out in approximately one hour, one minute, and 28 seconds. For now, we're back in the present. Hot off the tail of the season four finale, where Walt destroys the evidence and pours himself some whiskey to celebrate his victory over Gus. However, there's just one slight problem. Remember those cameras Gus placed to spy on Walt? Well, Gus's laptop has been confiscated for further investigation, which has all past and present data of Walt's meth cooking adventures. So, uh... Yeah, Mike has fun with his cocks, and is informed of Gus's death by Mr. Poof Poof. Buff, buff, buff. Mike angrily confronts Walt, but before he can go bang bang, Walt tells him about the cameras in Gus's lab, and how they'll all be screwed if they don't use the power of friendship to get out of this mess. Mike finds out that the laptop is under police custody, and the two argue about how they could destroy the evidence. You are probably talking about two feet of reinforced concrete. Or what about a magnet? What magnet? What about it? They test out the magnet idea, and the idea actually ends up working. Yeah, that did it! Huh? Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh! Saul informs Skylar of Ted's incident, and meets him at the hospital. <laughs> he looks like a hard-boiled egg! Walt, Mike, and Jesse cooperate together, and pull off their magnificent magnet heist. Their cover is almost completely blown at one point. Mr. White, let's get out of here! Just... One... Minute. But their plan manages to work. Bring Gustavo. Samsung laptop computer. Damaged. Glass screen is broken and in pieces. Did all that even work just now? Yes. Why? How do we know? Because I say so. That is just... Not how you win arguments. Saul tells Walt about Skyler's fun with taxes with Ted. Walt criticizes him for going along, but Saul criticizes him back for putting Brock in the hospital and quits doing business with Walt. We're done when I say we're done. Hi, A tier. Season 5, Episode 2 Madrigal. We open with one of the best cold opens in television history with a German guy eating tater tots. One of the food scientist guys tells him about all the recipes of the sauces, but the German guy looks blankly, as if he's preoccupied with something. The scientist tells him to give the Cajun kick-ass sauce a taste, and it's so abhorrently awful that the German guy electrocutes himself. This German guy is the CEO of Madrigal, a conglomerate that looked over Los Pollos Hermanos and its business practices. However, after Gus got the half-off discount, the police began investigating the company for any incriminating information, and the CEO decided that he wasn't in the mood to face the music. God, this scene is awesome. We see Walt swapping out rice and bales in the cigarettes, putting the real one behind an electrical outlet, and the fake one in Jesse's Roomba, where Jesse finds it, quote unquote, after believing he had misplaced the cigarette. He tearfully apologizes to Walt for accusing him of poisoning Brock, and the two go to Mike's house to propose a partnership. Mike says no, though, calling Walt a ticking time bomb. Later, Mike goes to a coffee shop and has a talk with a new character named Lydia. Lydia gives Mike a list of names that were previously on Gus's payroll, who could potentially rat the two of them out if interrogated, and implies that Mike should kill the men on the list. Mike proclaims that his guys are solid and that they shouldn't be killed. Junior's breakfast counter goes up to 18, and Hank and Gomez investigate Mike about his involvement with Los Poyos Hermanos. Hank starts to grill Mike for his involvement with Gus's drug empire, but Mike denies all of it and leaves. Walt and Jesse continue their rise back into the meth game, and they argue on where they'd be able to find some methylamine, all while Mike kicks Kaylee's ass at Hungry Hungry Hippos. Oh. Chow, the guy that Mike shot in the hand in that one episode, calls Mike to talk about his DEA meetings. 
But Mike realizes that Chow is being held hostage, and uses a dancing pig as a distraction to get the upper hand. Chris, are you ready? This is Mike. Mike finds out that Lydia went full force on the kill everybody on the list idea, and that she was going to pay 30000 for the assassin to kill Mike. Mike isn't too happy about this predicament, and threatens to kill Lydia, but his conscience gets the best of him, knowing that she has a daughter to take care of. Mike makes an offer to her to show where he can find some methylamine. You still plan to move forward? Yes, we do. I've reconsidered. I'm in. Walt almost plays Battleship with Skyler, but Skyler is too mentally distraught to plan out any battle strategy. This episode is good, but it kind of peaked at the beginning with a cold open. B tier. Season 5, Episode 3, Hazard Pay. Mike goes around town talking to Gus's men, informing them of the death of Chow, and reassuring them that they will get their compensation. Walt moves back in with Skyler, and Walt tells Saul that Mike will be joining the meth squad. Mike's okay. He's okay? He said he was gonna break my legs. Mike threatened me. He threatened Jesse. He probably threatened someone before breakfast this morning. Fuck you, I'm counting it. Saul starts scouting the area for potential places for the meth squad to cook. One place is too steamy, the other one's a health hazard, and one's the laser tag place. But after a lot of searching, they find a place that's just right. It's perfect. What? How are we gonna fit a lab in here? Who said here? They decide to use other people's houses to cook their meth, under the guise of being a pest control company. One of the employees of this company is an upstanding gentleman by the name of Todd Alquist, a silent, neutral young fellow who will not make any impact on the series going forward. We get this amazing scene of Skinny Pete playing the piano, which gives such a sun jolt of character development that it gives me whiplash, and they buy large storage cases for the meth squad. We get another great cooking montage, and Walt and Jesse talk about Jesse starting a family with Andrea. Jesse also briefly and casually mentions Gail at one point, which was kind of jarring to see, considering how Jesse wouldn't allow himself to even think about him just a season ago. Damn, that's some crazy development! What, does this show have good writers or something? Maria's more annoying than usual, so Skyler tells Marie to shut up. I know for a fact that that is illegal. Marie! Shut up! What? Shut up! Shut up! Shut hey. up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Skyler's been very emotionally numb this season so far. Skyler can be annoying at times, but it's hard not to feel for her. Marie tells Walt about Skyler's breakdown, and Walt explains to Marie why, telling her about Benneke's accident and Skyler's affair with him. Luckily, Marie is really good at telling secrets, so she doesn't t Okay, well, you know, you already know where this joke is going. She tells Hank like two minutes later. God damn you, Marie! The meth squad counts up the money from their big cookout, and Walt finds out the hard way that being the boss sucks ass. They originally made well over a million dollars, but the distribution of the money costs them a pretty penny, leaving them with only table scraps. This is business. End of story. This is your problem. It should come out of your end. Hey, hey! Stick out of mine. Alright? Go for it. Jesse's entire role this season really is to just stop Mike and Walt from killing each other, isn't it? Pretty good. Feeling a B tier for this one. Season 5, Episode 4, 51. Walt sells off his old car and buys him and Junior new rides in one of the greatest montages in any piece of media ever. Bonfire. Hank investigates Lydia while at work, interrogating her about her involvement with Gus Fring. She takes them to the warehouse and pins the blame on her inside guy, Ron. Skyler talks to Walt about sending Junior and Holly to a boarding school due to her worry about Walt being a bad influence on them. Unfortunately, she can't do that right now because Junior's too busy enjoying the most important meal of the day. Oh boy, just a few more breakfasts and the counter will be old enough to drink! Hank is continuing to piece together the Heisenberg case, and his boss gives him a huge opportunity to become an ASAC officer. Marie slips to Hank about Skyler's affair, as they go to Walt's house to celebrate his birthday. Hey! Hey! As they celebrate, though, Skyler decides to go for a dip in the pool. <laughs> Yahoo, am I right? Well, not so Yahoo, because Skyler is trying to drown herself. This goes so fucking hard. Jesse gets some methylamine from Lydia, but they find a tracker underneath one of the barrels. While Skyler dries off from her sick bubble bath, Walt talks to Hank and Marie about her affair with Benneke, and Marie offers to take care of the kids at their house for a bit. Walt later talks to Skyler, infuriated about Skyler not wanting the kids at the house. Walt figures that Skyler sees him as a threat, 
and they both get into a heated argument about Junior and Holly staying at the house, and Heisenberg begins to emerge. This is a joke. Come on, Skyler. You want to take me on? You want to take away my children? What's the plan? I don't know! Man, I can't joke about this. This is too real. Jesse shows the tracker to the rest of the meth squad, but they realize that it might not have been placed there by law enforcement. Okay. She's dead. This episode was pretty good. Giving it a B tier. They're watching Ratatouille. Never mind. A tier. Season 5, Episode 5. Dead Freight. The episode begins with a kid on a motorbike stopping to pick up a spider, with the sounds of a train honking in the background. Walt meets Hank at his new promotion, and tells Hank that Skyler is feeling better. Actually, she's... She already found someone. Yeah. Peter... There's no way that was a coincidence. There's no way. Walt then has a sudden breakdown in the office about him and Skyler's marriage. This might be a stretch, but trust me on this one. While Hank gets him a cup of coffee to cure his woes, Walt plants a wire to listen in on Hank's meetings, and he later meets with the meth squad to interrogate Lydia. They force her to call Hank and ask him about the tracking device from the episode before, and their suspicions about Lydia being the one who placed it there are confirmed. Hey, go me, come here, would you? You don't know anything about GPS trackers on a methylamine barrel, do you? No, I'm here from my team planet, anything, why? I know what you're thinking, but but I didn't do it. I'm telling you, I didn't plant that thing. Shut up. Before Mike can make Lydia's head go kablooey, she tells them about a source that has an ocean's worth of methylamine. More specifically, a freight train, which is carrying over 24,000 gallons worth of it. The meth squad come up with a plan to hijack the train, and they enlist the help from Todd to aid them in their operation. Skyler remains insistent that Junior and Holly stay with Hank and Marie, and she notices some dirt on Walt's pants. Outbearing bodies? Robbing a train. <laughs> what a badass. D-Day arrives, and the meth squad initiates their plan into full action. They first stop the train by having Bill Burr stall out right in the middle of the tracks, and Walt, Jesse, and Todd begin setting up their equipment while Bill Burr distracts the conductors. They start siphoning off the methylamine from the train, but a good Samaritan appears to help Bill Burr push his truck off the tracks, and Mike, who's keeping an eye out on the operation, tells Walt to retreat. However, Walt tells Mike to fuck off and keeps on pumping up that methylamine until they get a thousand gallons. They barely manage to get the amount they needed, and they all retreat, with Jesse nearly getting run over by the train in the process. With only a few kinks, their plan managed to go off without a hitch, and they now have all the methylamine they could ever need. Nothing else bad happens in this episode, and the main characters live happily ever after. Oh no. No! 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 Well, aside from that one part, this episode was amazing. Fast-paced, action-packed, and kept me on the edge of my seat, even though I knew exactly what was going to happen. Solid S-tier for sure. Season 5, Episode 6, Buyout. The episode starts off with an incredibly somber scene of Mike, Walt, Jesse, and Todd disposing of the kid's bike and body with some disturbing music and visuals to boot. Jesse has a smoke, and Todd talks about the situation with love and care. That shit happens, huh? The meth squad grill Todd for shooting the kid, but to Jesse's dismay, they decide to keep him on the payroll, due to the fact that he already knows too much about how the meth squad operates. Be careful with that spider, Todd. You might shoot it. Mike sees that the DEA is still hot on his trail, and Skyler finds out that Walt told Marie about the affair. Jesse finds out on the news that the kid, Drew Sharp, is trying to be located by the police, and Walt actually sympathizes with Jesse, letting him leave for the day. What's that? Missing kid on the news that we're directly responsible for? Great time for a good old show tune. By the way, the song Walt is whistling there is Lily of the Valley by Johnny Cash, the same flower that Walt poisoned Brock with. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. Holy shit, Jesse just got completely violated and he doesn't even know it. Mike tells Walt that the DEA is on his ass, and tells him that he's out of the meth squad. Walt tells Jesse that he'll have to take over for distribution, but unfortunately for Walt, Jesse is out too. Mike and Jesse sell their methylamine to this guy, Declan, but he figures that there's more methylamine that Mike and Jesse say they have, and he says there's no deal unless he gets the rest of the methylamine. Later, Jesse goes to Walt's house, trying to convince him to give up his other share of the methylamine, which Walt adamantly refuses. Jesse retorts back, saying that Walt already has all the money he could ever possibly need, and asks why he doesn't want to sell his own share. Jesse, have you heard of a company called Grey Matter? Well, I co-founded it in grad school with a couple of friends of mine. 
and I sold my share to my two partners for $5,000. Care to guess what that company is worth now? Millions. Billions, with a B. Jesse, you asked me if I was in the meth business or the money business. Neither. I'm in the empire business. It's a pretty relatable situation to be in. Everybody wants to be known for something, or be important in some way, shape, or form. And for Walt, that's definitely a hard pill to swallow. Knowing that you sold your share for something that's worth billions at such a low price. I can see why you wouldn't want to give up the chance now, and I find that to be relatable in a way. I mean, I wouldn't cook math, but like, you know what I mean. Anyways, this speech is about to be trumped by one of the most painful scenes in the entire show. And yes, I'm including the birthday scene in this. Jesse has dinner with Walt and Skyler, who both hurl insults at each other as Jesse tries to enjoy his glass of water in awkward silence. What else did he tell you about me? Just good stuff. Just really, you know, really good, good stuff. Did you also tell him about my affair? Mike forces Walt into giving up his methylamine, but Walt seduces him into not giving it up, and they have an eventful night. God, think of how many Emmys that would have won. No, what really happens is that Mike restrains Walt, so that he doesn't do anything stupid with a methylamine. But Walt manages to escape using some electricity, while Saul gets a restraining order from the DEA for Mike. When Mike comes back, he sees that all of the methylamine is gone, and puts a gun to Walt's head. But Jesse tells him about an idea before he can pull the trigger. Look, you get your five million, we both do it, and he gets his methylamine, all right? Just hear him out. Is that true, Walter? Everybody wins. Hi, A tier. Season 5, Episode 7. Say my name. Oh boy, Walt's gonna say the thing! The meth squad meets Declan in the middle of the desert, ready to strike up a deal. Walt berates Declan, saying that Declan's meth is only 70% pure, while his meth is 99.1% pure. Yours is uh, just some generic cola. What I'm making is classic Coke. Do you really want to live in a world without Coca Cola? Walt continues to berate him, talking about how Declan dyes his meth blue to look like his product, but how he now has the opportunity to sell meth from the greatest meth cooks in America. Declan asks exactly who he is, and Walt says the thing. Say my name. Eisenberg. You're goddamn right. A lot of people joke about how awkward it would be if Declan legitimately didn't know his name, but I feel like in this universe, it'd be like if someone didn't know what McDonald's is. It's a name so well known that it's part of the country's daily lexicon. It's really the first time in Walt's life he's ever had this moment to shine, and my god, you can feel the ego burst through the seams. As much as I love the Say My Name line though, I have a great appreciation for that do you really want to live in a world without coke line. Great line of coke. I mean coke line. I mean... Fuck. The deal is reached with Declan, and Mike parts ways with Jesse and Walt. Mike has his lawyer put his money away in this great montage, and he disposes of his evidence and weaponry into a well. So when the DEA looks through Mike's house with a search warrant, they find nothing. Walt makes an offer to Jesse to start doubling down on the meth cooking, but Jesse is still head set on quitting the meth game, and asks Walt for his money. Walt tries his best to convince Jesse to stay, saying that he'd be squandering his potential, and they start arguing with each other. I'm done. No, you're not. You're not done. You're not leaving. Because if you leave, you get nothing! You understand me? NOTHING! Hank is still distracted by the fact that he couldn't find any dirt on Mike. And his boss tells him that the case is essentially over, and to stop snooping around on Mike. Hank notices that all of Gus's men are being represented by the same lawyer, and tells Gomez to keep an eye out for him. In lieu of a partner, Walt hires Todd to cook some meth with him. The lawyer puts away more of Mike's money, but this time, things aren't looking too hot for him. Hey. Hey. Walt's breakdown counter goes up to two as he takes back the bug he planted in Hank's office. Walt also finds out from a conversation with Gomez that Mike's lawyer is going to give a tell-all about everything, including his deals with Mike. Walt warns Mike as he watches over Kaylee, and he flees the scene, leaving Kaylee behind. 
It's a really sad scene, knowing that it's probably the last time Mike will ever be able to talk to Kaylee. It's also probably one of the first times Mike has ever been genuinely shaken in the entire series. As he knows that, for the first time in a while, he has absolutely no grasp or control over the situation. Walt informs Saul over the situation, and Saul gets a call from Mike, asking him to give him his money. Saul figures that the DEA is tracking his car, so Walt decides to give Mike his money. But before he does that, Walt demands Mike for the name of Gus's men. But Mike decides that he's too cool for that, telling him that everything that happened is Walt's fault. <laughs> wow! Oh, that's some kind of logic right there, Mike. Why don't you walk me through this, Mike? We had a good thing, you stupid son of a bitch. We had a lab. We had everything we needed. It all ran like clockwork. But no, you just had to blow it up. You and your pride and your ego. Walt's not about to take the beatdown of the century lying down. So in retaliation, he fucking shoots Mike. <laughs> As the adrenaline leaves Walt's body, he tracks down Mike, who's sitting down in the fields, badly wounded. Walt realizes that he could have gotten the names from Lydia anyways, and attempts to apologize to Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. This whole thing could have been avoided. Shut the fuck up. Let me die in peace. S tier. Season 5, Episode 8. Fly 2. LET'S GO! No, I'm just kidding. Season 5, Episode 8. Gliding Overall. The episode opens up with Walt staring at a fly, and with Walt telling Jesse that Mike is gone. So what do we do? We? Who's we? This clip reminds me of that time Jesse got roasted by Jane. Us. Alright, I'm talking about us. Us. Yeah. You and me. Who's you and me? This connection between the two lines implies that Walt and Jesse are officially dating. Bravo, Vince. Walt talks with Lydia, asking her for the name of Gus's men. Lydia gives him the list, but in exchange for an agreement with Walt to grow his business exponentially, moving his blue meth across the border. We're going to make a lot of money together. Huh. Where have you heard that before? You're all right, man. You're all right. We're going to make a lot of money together. Oh, yeah! There's a lot of little details hidden throughout season five and they're all great. It makes it feel almost like a trip down memory lane, demonstrating the journey these characters have gone on. Walt meets with Todd's uncle, Jack, to plan their murder of Gus's men. Where do you suppose these come from? I've seen this one before. You have, more specifically, in season two, episode three, Bit by Dead Bee. I have a problem. We then get one of the best montages in the entire show, with Jack's men taking out every single one of Gus's men in the span of two minutes. Later, Walt goes over to Hank's house, frustrated about the news of Gus's men being murdered. Rocks, right? Rocks, yes. They're called minerals, Hank. Hank talks about a class he used to take in college, but Walt gets really bored of his story and starts cooking meth right in his own house out of spite. Not really, but we get another montage of Walt going about his business, making deals and earning lots of money. Two great montages in one episode? I'm gonna come! Marie tells Skyler it's probably time to kick the kids out of their house, and Skyler drives Walt to a storage facility, showing how much money Walt has truly earned in the iconic money shot. <laughs> Walt then finally figures that enough is enough, and after another cancer checkup mirroring a shot from the very first episode, and noticing that the towel dispenser he beat up in season 2 is still beat up, he gives Jesse his money, and goes home to tell Skyler that he's officially retired from the meth game for good. Now, with Walt officially out, the family back home, and with more money than he could ever count, things seem to finally be back to normal. With a lot of scars, Walt managed to accomplish his goal of keeping his family financially secure, and it looks like it's about to be a happily ever after for Walt. Unfortunately, Hank's bowels are a little more active than usual today, and he decides not to hold it this time around. He thinks that the magazines won't make for good reading material, and picks Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, and... Well, I think you know what's about to happen next. To W.W., my star, my perfect silence. W.W. <laughs> I mean, you figure that out, you know? Woodrow Wilson? Willy Wonka? Walter White? <laughs> you got me. Another S tier. Season 5, Episode 9, Blood Money. We get another flash forward of homeless Walt as he enters his now abandoned house with teenagers skateboarding in an emptied out pool 
and with the word Heisenberg spray painted across the walls. He looks behind the power outlet and finds the ricin he hid from a few episodes ago. Hello, Carol. We return to Hank's realization that his brother-in-law was Heisenberg the entire time, and he is absolutely stunned. He just wanted to enjoy a relaxing shit, but now he's made a discovery that recontextualizes his entire viewpoint of Walt as a person, and could shatter the entire family permanently if he were to tell. So not cool. Hank attempts to drive home, but the thought of his own brother-in-law being the person he was chasing the entire time distracts him, and causes him to have a panic attack. Hank! Hey! So not cool. After arriving from the hospital for the fucking 47th time, he looks through the evidence of the Gail Bedeker case, doing a handwriting analysis to confirm his suspicions. Lydia goes to the car wash, who asks Walt to give the new cooks a tutorial on how to make the blue stuff. Since the quality has dropped down to 68%, Walt tells her to fuck off, and to have an A one day. Skyler finds out from Walt who Lydia is, and Lydia is told to fuck off once more from Skyler and to have an A one day. Hank looks through all of the evidence on the Heisenberg case, connecting the dots between the case and Walt's involvement, even going as far to rewatch the security tapes from all the way back in season one. Badger pitches his Star Trek script to Skinny Pete, as Jesse slumps back into a depressed state, and later he goes to Saul's office to give his money to Kaylee and Drew Sharp's parents, which Saul says might raise eyebrows. Mike left one step ahead of the boys in blue, and you better believe his family's on the radar. A couple million bucks shows up, they're gonna... Snatch it. Too sweet. The feds have already taken Kaylee's money twice. What are you, you going for a hat trick? I'll freaking do it myself, so just... oh, no, no, no. You might want to think about cleaning up a little, getting some rest. You've looked better. Let's get it done. Saul calls Walt, who tells him to keep the money stored for Jesse, and later goes to Jesse's house to give back his cash. Walt asks why Jesse was going to give it to Kaylee, and Jesse explains that she needs someone to look after her, and that he believes that Mike is dead. Walt tells Jesse a bold-faced lie. I did not kill Mike. And I certainly didn't shoot him through the window of a car with a revolver. That would be ridiculous. Walt pukes his guts out and realizes that Gail's book is gone. Later, he connects the dots, realizing that Hank must have taken it after finding a bug placed under his car. Jesse starts tossing away all his money like he's the world's most expensive parade float, and Walt goes to Hank's house, confronting him about the bug he found under his car. You wouldn't know anything about this, would you, Hank? Hank closes the garage door behind him and lets his rage get the best of him. Hank was you. All along it was you! Hank confronts Walt about everything, from him driving into traffic to keep him from the laundry, to the fake call from Marie, to him killing Gus Fring. Walt tells him that his cancer is back, and that using these accusations against him is pointless, and could destroy the family for nothing. I don't even know who I'm talking to. If that's true, if you don't know who I am, then maybe your best course would be to tread lightly. A tier. Season 5, Episode 10, Buried. We see an old man pick up the wads of cash that Jesse was tossing around last episode, eventually spotting a mentally unstable Jesse spinning around on the playground. Walt rushes back home after getting KO'd by Hank. Oh! And Hank calls Skyler, telling her to meet up at a restaurant. There, Hank tells her about Walt, and tells her to spill the beans about Walt's meth-cooking adventures. Skyler refuses to admit anything, knowing that she willingly took part in Walt's schemes, and eventually slips out of Hank's grasp. <laughs> Am I under arrest? Am I under arrest? Hank, are you arresting me? Am I under arrest? This is exactly why you shouldn't eat at Denny's. Huel and Bill Burr get Walt's cash for him, but they decide to take a little nap before they stash it away. Dude. Mm. What are you doing? Huel. Mm. Hey, quit screwing around. Mm. We are here to do a job, not channel Scrooge McDuck. Mm. You hearing me? I Mm. Dude. Mm. Oh, screw it. Mm. Mm. Walt talks to Saul, complaining about how Skyler went to Hank without asking him first, and Saul comes up with the idea to send Hank to Belize, which pisses off Walt, saying Hank is still family. 
which like, you know, respectable. Bill Burr and he will get Walt's money. All of it stored in a bunch of barrels. And he drives out in the middle of Tahajali, an Indian reservation, to bury it. Marie goes to Skyler's house, asking her if the rumors about Walt being a drug dealer are true. Marie deduces that Skyler was in on it for the most part, and Skyler tries apologizing. I am so sorry. Oh! S tier. Marie then acts completely responsible and tries taking Holly away from Skylar. I don't care how much money you launder. That is screwed up. You can't Give take that away from me. Give me my baby, Skylar. Give me my child. Double S tier. Walt finishes digging the hole and puts all of the money barrels into it. Once he's done, he saves the coordinates of the barrels on the off chance he'll need it. But that day will never come, so we're good. <laughs> oh my God. Walt spends the night on the bathroom floor, and he assumes that Skyler made a deal with Hank, and requests her to hang on to the money as long as she can. You can't give yourself up without giving up the money, so maybe our best move here is to tread lightly. Is to stay quiet. Oh, not as cool. Lydia checks in on Declan's group to ask why the meth has suddenly become complete ass, and she tricks the group into being murdered by Jack and Todd's gang. Marie advises Hank to turn his story into the DEA, but Hank wants to work on this case alone. Hank goes back into work, and is informed about Jesse's unofficial Wheel of Fortune episode taping. Hank concocts a plan to take down Walt with Jesse, and he goes into the interrogation room to pitch the idea. Hi, A tier. Season 5, Episode 11, Confessions. Todd calls Walt, telling him that his gang killed Declan, and Todd is given the role of the main cook of the meth operation. He also recalls the train heist to Jack, skipping over the tiny detail that he shot a kid. Hank makes the offer to Jesse, asking to give himself up to the DEA to get Walt arrested, in exchange for a plea deal. But Jesse decides that Hank isn't exactly the best person to talk to right now, so he calls Saul. Hank goes home defeated, and Walt films a porno, detailing a bogus story that we'll get deep into in a few minutes. Walt and Skyler meet with Hank and Marie in a Mexican restaurant, attempting to make amends with them. So, how about that guacamole? We make it right here at the table. This scene is fucking unbelievable. They try to convince Hank and Marie to keep the kids out of the investigation, and they get into an intense yet silent argument. There is no drug empire. Lying to your son, to all of us, is that right? What do I have to do to make you believe me? Why'd you kill yourself, Walt? What the fuck? This whole thing dies with you, right? That's what you're saying here? Well, maybe you should just go ahead and die then. I mean, yeah, but like... No! After Marie stops talking to Walt like she's in a cod lobby, Walt and Skyler give a DVD to Hank and Marie, which depicts a made-up story by the two, in which Hank was the secret kingpin the entire time, forcing Walt to cook for him to aid his drug empire. My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. This is my confession. He said the thing! Hank realizes how much of a checkmate this video really is, as he has no real defense against it, considering the fact that his medical bills were paid in full with Walt's drug money. Walt meets Jesse out in the desert with Saul, and Walt tells him about the man who could change his identity. Jesse gets mad at Walt for constantly manipulating him, to which Walt responds by manipulating him with a hug. Jesse decides to heed Walt's advice, and use the disappearing man to change his identity. He wants to smoke a joint, but Saul says, No, 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 no! And tries to get Jesse to give his pot to him. Which he refuses. All right. In case something goes wrong, guy doesn't show, whatever, you give me a call. Seriously? Hello, kitty? Seriously? It's free? Uh, we got a beggar's chooser situation here, so stop busting my balls. After Jesse completes his femboy phase, he's taken by Huel to be picked up by the disappearer and decides to have a celebratory smoke, but realizes that his pot is nowhere to be found. He realizes that Huel must have pickpocketed his pot from him, and then he's like, hey, what if the rice and cigarette was also pickpocketed from me just like that? That would be so funny. Hey, wait a minute. Jesse angrily storms to Saul's office. Hey man, you can't go in there. He a no show? Why didn't you call? Why didn't you call? Ugh. Ugh. Stop! Ugh. He holds Saul at gunpoint, saying that Saul had Huel lift the cigarette for Walt. Saul claims that Walt coerced him into doing it, saying that he didn't realize he was going to poison Brock with it. Jesse somewhat calms down and runs out of the office. Saul notifies Walt that Jesse's gone rogue, and Walt retrieves the 38 snub he had stashed away in the Coke machine in case of emergency. Meanwhile, Jesse busts down Walt's door and starts pouring gasoline all over Walt's house. <laughs> Oh, my God.
A tier. Season 5, Episode 12, Rabid Dog. After obtaining his 38 snub, Walt heads to his house and sees that Jesse's car is parked outside. He tries sneaking in from the back and attempts to approach Jesse inside, but is surprised to see that nobody is there. Walt gets Huel to help clean up the gasoline from his house and tries his best to clean up all the evidence. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Um, hey, guys, guys, guys. Yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, what? He pretends that he got gas all over himself at the gas station due to a pump malfunction, but even Junior sees through this lie. They decide to stay at a hotel for a bit while the gas fumes die down, and Walt meets Saul to get an update on Jesse's whereabouts. Saul suggests pulling an old yeller on Jesse, but Walt shoots this idea down immediately. Just like old Yeller. Skyler eventually confronts Walt on his lies about the pump, but Walt brushes it off, saying that Jesse only tried to burn the house down. No biggie. But Skyler apparently thinks that this is a huge issue and goes on an I told you so, Nanana Boo Boo rant. We find out what really prevented Jesse from burning the house down. As he snorts cocaine and barges into the house with gasoline, Hank confronts him, gun in hand. Jesse tells him that he's doing this because Walt poisoned Brock, and Hank tells him to turn the lighter off and cooperate. You can't keep getting away with it! He can't keep getting away with it! Hank takes Jesse in his car, just as Walt notices Jesse's car in his driveway. Hank takes Jesse to his house to begin their ultimate plan to take down Walt. Junior has an emotional moment with Walt by the pool. You think I came all this way just to let something as silly as lung cancer take me down? Not a chance. I'm not going anywhere. Well... Uh... Jesse makes a confession tape of his own for Hank, telling his entire story of Walter White and his dealings, and they later listen to another message from Walt, telling Jesse to meet at the plaza. Hank tells him the plan. Jesse will go talk to Walt with a wire on, have him explain everything, and they'll arrest Walt with the evidence they need. However, Jesse sees this as a death sentence, since he tried to burn down his house quite literally yesterday. Yeah, no, Mr. White's gay for me. Everyone knows that. Nevertheless, Jesse follows through with a plan, and meets with Walt at the plaza. However, while walking, Jesse notices a man he thinks is guarding Walt, and walks to a payphone to talk, as he's come up with another plan to take Walt down. I just want to talk to you. Uh, I'm not doing what you want anymore. This is just a heads up to let you know I'm coming for you. See, I decided that burning down your house is nothing. Next time I'm gonna get you where you really live. Jesse, listen. A tier. Season 5, Episode 13. Tohajali. Prepare your buttholes, ladies and gentlemen, because they are about to be protruded by some of the best episodes of television in recent memory. These next four episodes define everything that makes Breaking Bad so fantastic and iconic to this very day. Without these four episodes, I don't think the show would be nearly as popular as it is today. It's gonna get real dark though, so prepare yourself. Todd and Jack's gang attempt to recreate Walt's meth, with Lydia supervising to ensure its quality. Lydia asks why the meth isn't blue like Walt's, and Todd later apologizes to Lydia for the color, offering to make negotiations with the buyers, and he later gets a call from Walt, moments after Jesse made that threatening phone call. Hey, it's Walt. I, um, uh, Todd. I think I might have another job for your uncle. Jesse gives his idea to Hank, which is to use Walt's own money against him. To start, they fake Jesse's death with a made-up crime scene. They later take Huel to a safe house and use this photo of Jesse while interrogating him, saying that Walt killed him and that he's currently in a safe house for his own protection. Huel eventually gives up some vital information for Hank and Gomez, and they leave, telling him not to take a step out the door until they come back. Walt visits Jack's gang, confirming their hit out on Jesse, and they do it under the condition that Walt teaches Todd to cook his formula. To get Jesse out of hiding, Walt tries to lure him out by having Andrea call his phone, but Hank intercepts this call, blocking Walt's assassination attempt. Gomez figures that this plan is a big fat game over, but Hank comes up with another plan. I'll bet you 10 to 1 he buried that money. No kidding. So what? There's a whole lot of desert out there. How are we gonna find the right spot? You said it yourself, there's no GPS on the van. Yeah. Walt doesn't know that. Saul goes to the car wash to meet with Walt, and runs into Walt Jr who recognizes him from his ads. You're on our billboard, you're, you're the lawyer guy, yeah. Better call Saul. Thank you very much, good to meet you. Yeah. Don't drink and drive, but okay. if you do, call me. Saul tells Walt that Huel's gone AWOL and thinks that there might be a setup. However, Walt doesn't believe this, as he thinks that Jesse is too high to do anything elaborate. That is, until one of the best and most underrated scenes in the entire show plays out. Walt gets a text from Jesse, showing an open barrel of money out in the desert. Shocking Walt. Jesse calls Walt, telling him that he found six more barrels just like the one in the picture.
Jesse tells Walt that he threatened Huel to give up information, and that Huel took him to the rental van, which had GPS, leading him to Walt's money. He threatens to burn Walt's money, and Walt pleads with him not to. I said I'm coming! Don't you touch my money! Fire in the hole, bitch! There goes 10 G's! Oh, nice orange flame! No, 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 no! Walt tells him that his cancer is back, and that Jesse isn't hurting anyone but his kids. But Jesse calls him out for being a hypocrite. Walt apologizes for what he did to Brock, and says that everything he's done was to protect him and Jesse. I ran over those gangbangers! I killed Emilio and Crazy 8Y! I did all of those things to try to save your life as much as mine! Only you're too stupid to know it! A detail that I like about this whole scene is that Jesse refers to Walt simply as Walt, rather than Mr. White. I'll give you a hint, Walt. It involves a couple of five-gallon cans of gasoline and a lighter. No, 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 Jesse, please! Calling him Mr. White was a sign of respect, showing that Jesse looked up to him. But at this point, Jesse has lost all respect for Walt, and this change in speech is a subtle way to indicate this. Jesse eventually stops talking to Walt, and Walt makes it to his money. However, Jesse is nowhere to be seen, and as Walt walks around with his gun in hand, he realizes that he was set up by Jesse. And as he sees what he presumes to be Jesse's car pulling up to the scene, he goes into hiding and calls Jack and his gang to take him out. However, he realizes that Hank and Gomez were teaming with Jesse this whole time, and he calls off the hit. We get a shot that parallels the very first shot of the entire show, as Walt eventually gives himself up to Hank, who arrests him on the spot. Walter White, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney and have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you at the government's expense. Do you understand these rights as I have just recited them to you? Walt calls Jesse a coward, and Jesse spits in his face, and they fight for a brief moment before Walt is forced into the car. Hank calls Marie, celebrating his capture of Walt. Unfortunately for Hank, this celebration is a bit premature, as Jack and his gang decided that they didn't want to call off the hit. Walt screams to Hank to get away, and for Jack to put down his weapons, but this situation is out of Walt's control. In one of the best and most intense moments of the show, Hank, Gomez, and Jack's gang get into a huge shootout. Holy fucking shit. S tier. Season 5, episode 14. Ozymandias. Double S tier. Come on, you already knew the moment I started this series. It isn't exactly the most unpopular opinion to have, but there's a very good reason why this episode is considered to be the finest episodes in television history. This episode reaches heights that some of the best shows don't even come close to reaching. While Crawl Space is my personal favorite, this is what I believe to be the best episode of Breaking Bad, and you'd better bet your ass I'm about to go balls deep into this episode. So let's get this thing started. We start off the episode with a flashback to the very first episode of the show, with Walt and Jesse in the middle of their very first cook. This was the very last scene that was shot for the entire show, presumably for Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul's hair to grow back, and it's pretty amazing to watch everything come full circle. Afterwards, Walt calls Skyler, and Walt tells his very first lie of the show, telling her that Bogdan forced him to work overtime at the car wash. They also decide on the name Holly for their future daughter, and Walt hangs up. We then get this amazing transition in the present day, revealing that the location of Walt's money in the shootout also took place in the same location of Walt's very first cook. After the shootout dies down, we see that Hank is badly wounded, and Gomez is dead. Hank tries to crawl towards Gomez's shotgun, but is stopped by Jack and his gang, who take it from him. They find out that Hank is a part of the DEA, and are about to shoot him when Walt screams out and pleads with him not to. Walt admits that Hank is his brother-in-law, but while Walt tries to convince Jack that the DEA has little involvement, Hank defiantly claims that the cavalry is coming. Walt tries everything to convince Jack not to kill Hank, including begging Hank to promise not to say anything, and bribing Jack with his money. But eventually, Hank tells Walt how hopeless the situation really is. You're the smartest guy I ever met. And you're too stupid to see. He made up his mind ten minutes ago. Do what you're gonna do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know this scene has kind of been ruined because of the memes, but I think those memes go to show how iconic and devastating this shot really is. He went into cooking meth to save his family, but because of his own ego and intentions, he ended up destroying it irreparably. As Walt cries on the ground, Jack and his gang start digging up Walt's money, and they take every single barrel, putting them all into a truck, and they bury Hank and Gomez's bodies into the same hole Walt stored his money. They leave Walt with a barrel, and Jack lets Walt go. However, Walt's anger isn't about to let a certain person off the hook. 
Pinkman. You still owe me. If you can find him, we'll kill him. Found him. Jesse is eventually taken by Jack's gang, and they're originally about to kill him, as Jesse looks at two birds in the sky, symbolizing his presumed return with Jane. However, Todd suggests that they hold Jesse captive instead, to cook the blue meth for them. As Jesse is dragged away, Walt stops him, and makes a confession three seasons in the making. I watched Jane die. I watched her overdose, and choke to death. I could have saved. I didn't. Jack and his gang take Jesse away, leaving Walt on his lonesome. Before I go any further, some of you might be asking what the name of this episode means. Ozymandias is the name of a poem written by Percy Shelley, and details the story of a pharaoh who once led a prosperous and mighty kingdom that eventually turned into a barren wasteland. Not even a shred of evidence indicates the location of a former kingdom. All that remains is a desert. This story perfectly reflects Walt's current situation. His money is taken, his operation has fallen completely apart, and his family has been forcefully taken away from him. It's all over. Also, another detail I want to mention is that the creators of this episode obtained special permission to display the credits after Jesse is taken away, around 20 minutes into the episode, as to not take away from any of the dramatic tension. It's an amazing touch. As Walt drives home with his money, the car shuts down. Due to a hole that was shot through the gas tank, Walt decides to take the barrel out of the car and roll it back home in this amazing scene. If you look closely on the ground at one point, you can see Walt's lost khakis from the very first episode of the show pass by. Walt then runs into a house, and uses the money in the barrel to purchase the truck off the owner. As Skyler calls Walt asking where he is, by the way the person in the background is Laura Wally Beckett, the writer of this episode, Marie arrives at the car wash, asking Skyler to tell Junior about Walt's secret due to his supposed arrest. Meanwhile, Jesse is trapped in the prison, and Todd takes him to the meth lab, where Jesse learns that Andrea and Brock will be killed if he refuses to cook for them. Junior learns of his dad's secret, and has a meltdown, calling Marie and Skyler liars for going along. As Walt rushes back home, he packs up his and the rest of his family's belongings, and is ready to leave when Skyler, Junior, and Holly return home. Walt desperately tries to get the family to come with him and change their identities, while Junior keeps asking more and more questions. As Walt demands Junior to pack his things, Skyler asks why Walt isn't in custody, and where Hank is right now. You killed him. You killed Hank. What? No, no, no. You killed no, him. No, no, no! I tried to save him! Skyler has reached her boiling point with Walt, and as Walt demands the family to pack up and leave, Skyler notices the knives sticking out from the kitchen, referencing one of the first shots of this episode, and the moment Walt thought to use a knife to kill Tuco. Get out of here. Now. Skyler. Get out! Oh! Junior tackles Walt to the ground, and Walt yells angrily at Skyler. What the hell is wrong with you? We're a family! As Junior calls 911, Walt takes one more desperate move to hold on to whatever aspect of his family he has left by kidnapping Holly. Skyler desperately tries to get Holly back, but it's no use, as Walt backs out of the driveway, pushing the car out of the way. Skyler tries her best to run to Walt's car, but it's too late, and she collapses in the street. This entire scene is unbelievable. Watching this, you'd think Hank dying would be the climax of the episode, but it gets even worse than one could possibly imagine. The scene specifically with Walt and Skyler fighting is so good, that I believe there's an actual science behind it. Let me explain. First off, this is one of the first times in the entire series that we see either of these characters raise their voices. Junior and Skyler usually remain pretty neutral, with Skyler having the occasional argument with Walt. However, this is one of the first times that we see either of them take this level of action, with Skyler slicing Walt's hands with a knife, and Junior physically pulling his father off Skyler. This level of new territory and unfamiliarity, combined with the situation we see these characters in, makes for this intense feeling that we as an audience can't shake. Second, in the background we can hear Holly crying, which adds even more intensity to the scene. <sighs> Humans have an instinct known as fight or flight, a primal response in our brain that causes us to immediately react to a situation by either responding to the scene head on, or by fleeing the scene entirely. One of the most common causes of fight or flight is the sound of a baby crying, so by adding this sound to this already intense scene, it increases the sense of uneasiness as a viewer. Third, the cinematography. You got these shots of the camera zooming in on Walt and Skyler's fight, which adds a ton of energy to the scene. Also, the acting is astonishing. 
It all comes together to create such an incredible scene. Walt takes Holly to a gas station to clean her up, but Holly says something that breaks Walt's heart. Apparently this part was improvised by the baby playing Holly. You know you've got a good episode when the baby is at the top of her game. This scene might just be the hardest to watch out of the same episode with death and fights between family members, and it really goes to show the level of disconnect Walt has between him and his family. The police and Marie come to the house, sending out an Amber Alert for Holly, and Skyther gets a call from Walt, who gets wiretapped by the police. Walt berates Skyther, saying that he warned her that there'd be consequences if she crossed him. Skyther apologizes, and asks what happened to Hank. Where is Hank? Please, we need to know. You're never gonna see Hank again. Skyther begs Walt to come home, but Walt tells her that there's still things he has left to do. This might just be one of the best scenes in the entire show, and I know I've said that like 40 times, but this time I mean it. I gotta do a big ass deep dive for this one. First off, on the surface, it seems like Walt is berating Skyler as usual, but he's actually doing her a huge favor. Skyler committed a huge crime by helping Walt launder his money, but Walt's phone call essentially lets her off the hook, framing Skyler as the moral spouse that was forced to do Walt's dirty work. Oh no, Walt, Walt, you have to stop. You have to stop this. It's immoral, it's illegal. You're always whining and complaining about how I make my money, just dragging me down while I do everything. For a majority of the time, Walt is putting on a facade, and Skyther realizes this early on. However, while he still plays the part of the bad guy on the phone call, Walt's real feelings start to see through, as he breaks down crying, telling Skyler the truth about Hank. Throughout the entire series, Walt cooked meth to make money for his family, and although the majority of season 5 depicts him cooking meth for his ego and pride, a part of him still wanted to keep his family safe and secure, and it can be seen very well during this phone call. Also, there's another important thing I wanted to talk about here. There's this theory that Walt obtains a characteristic from every single person he kills, and I wanted to save this theory for this segment right here, because there are a few key moments where this theory is depicted. First off, the two guys Walt ran over in Season 3 used kids in their operation, and in Season 4, Walt uses Brock to get Jesse on his side. In the episode Blood Money, while Walt is puking in the toilet, he uses a towel underneath his knees, something Gus did in the episode where he killed the entire cartel. In this scene, when Walt is asked about Hank's whereabouts, Walt has this to say. You're never gonna see Hank again. This directly parallels something Mike told Walt when he asked him about where Gus is at the beginning of Season 4. Where's Gus? Why? Because I would like to speak with him. What? Walter, you're never gonna see him again. Also, at the end of the phone call, Walt snaps his phone in half. Something Gus does at Season 3 while listening to Juan Bolsa's death, and throughout Better Call Saul. There are probably a lot more examples of this throughout the show, so let me know if you've got any more examples of this. Anyways, Walt takes Holly to a fire department, where two guys are playing a game of chess, in which the White King only has a few moves to escape. Walt's are white? Kingpin? Oh! The next day, Walt meets with Ed the Disappearer, and is taken away in this fantastic closing shot. Oh my god. There is a very good reason why this episode is currently the only one with a 10 out of 10 rating on IMDb. I don't know how it's possible to make an episode this amazing. Literally every single scene is a 10 out of 10. There are moments so brilliant that it's hard to describe. No matter how many times I rewatch this episode, the feelings that I have are still the same as my first viewing. All of the awards and praise this episode received are well deserved. There will never be an episode quite as fantastic as Ozymandias. Season 5, Episode 15. Granite State. We see Ed the Disappearer taking Saul into the vacuum repair shop, prepared to change his identity and skip town. Ed tells Saul that he'll need to stay in the repair shop for a few days while he gets situated, and tells him that he'll be staying with a fun goofball bunkmate. How's he holding up? You be the judge. FBI agents look through Marie's house, which has been broken into by Jack's gang. 
they watch and mock Jesse's confession tape, and they find out that Todd killed Drew Sharp, which they pay very little attention to. Jesse begins his escape from the compound by using a paperclip to unlock his shackles, while Walt tries to plan a hit out on Jack and his gang, which Saul advises against. They talk about the feds going after Skyler, and how her and the rest of the family will be recoed out of the house. Saul tells Walt that the best thing to do is to stay in Albuquerque and confess his crimes, since he'll probably be dead soon anyways. But Walt is bloodthirsty for revenge, and he's dead set on killing Jack and his gang and getting the money to his family. Walt tries forcing Saul to come with him, but Saul tells him that he's not his lawyer anymore. It's not over. It's over. Todd breaks into Skyler's house and tells her not to say anything about Lydia to the feds. Todd meets with Lydia and says that not only will Skyler not say anything, but that the purity of the meth has risen to 92%. I wonder how that happened. Walt is taken to New Hampshire by Ed, and is placed inside a log cabin, forced to live only on canned goods, old-fashioned technology, and two copies of Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Ed warns that Walt will be caught if he steps one foot out the door, so Walt listens to his every word, and steps out the gate not even an hour later. However, he changes his mind, saving the escape for tomorrow. And speaking of escaping, Jesse manages to flee from the prison. Unfortunately, he's caught by Jack's gang on his way out, and he lashes out at them. Just kill me now and get it over with because there's no way I'm doing one more cook for you psycho fucks! In response, they go to Andrea's house, and unfortunately, they follow up on their threat, all the while forcing Jesse to watch. After that fucking horrific scene, Walt meets with Ed again, who brings him more supplies and newspapers. Ed also tells him the news of Skyler, who is now using her maiden name. Before Ed leaves though, Walt begs him to stay, paying $10,000 to play cards with him for an hour. Reminds me of the scene where Jesse asked Walt to go go-karting with him, but Walt refused. Karma is a nasty bitch. That night, Walt's wedding ring falls off of his finger, symbolizing how dainty his fingers are. Oh, and his physical and emotional disconnect from his family, I guess. However, Walt tries his best to send his money to his family, sneaking his money into a box and sending it to Junior's friend's house. He calls Junior, attempting to inform him of the package, but Junior has a breakdown, telling his dad how much he hates him. Why are you still alive? Why don't you just, just die already? Just, just die! It's a depressing scene in an already incredibly depressing episode. And it really does feel like everything Walt worked toward was for nothing. In the end, he destroyed his family, his operation, his reputation, and his legacy. The only true accomplishments to his name are his contributions to the company Grey Matter. But even then, he sold his share too early, figuratively and literally, all because of his ego. In the end, Walt has no one to blame but himself for all the destruction that ruined his life irreparably. Devastated, Walt confesses his crimes to the DEA on the payphone and collapses at the bar, ready to accept his defeat. However, as he watches the TV, he notices his former partners, Gretchen and Elliot, being interviewed. They say that Walt had very little involvement in the company, and that his only contribution to the company was the name. They also claim that Walter White is dead, and that his true personality has since vanished. So my question is, is Walter White still out there? No, he's not. You sound very sure. I am. I, I can't speak to this Heisenberg that, that, that people refer to, but whatever, whatever he became, the, the sweet, kind, brilliant man that we once knew long ago, he's gone. But to be absolutely clear. Throughout the series, Walter has proven himself to have one of the most fragile egos of any character on television. Even at the very beginning, parts of his ego shine through, and it was only until later seasons that it was put on full display. This destruction of his legacy had just taken one final blow to his self-centered attitude. The only thing Walter had left to his name were the contributions he made to science, and he just witnessed them being described as nothing more than a name change. In one final move, Walter escapes the bar just as the police bust in, and begins to formulate a plan to right his wrongs, and to rewrite his legacy to have a more meaningful ending. Season 5, Episode 16, Felina.
in one of the coldest cold opens in the entire series. Walter gathers his supplies in the car to prepare for the long trip ahead of him, and for a brief moment, believes he's busted by the cops. However, the shining light passes him by, and he begins his ride on the road to redemption. He first stops by a gas station, obtaining the address of Gretchen and Elliot via payphone, and places his watch on the top before leaving. This has absolutely no symbolic meaning whatsoever. Yeah, I know, right? What a twist. Later, Walter sneaks into Gretchen and Elliot's mansion, taking a look around at the wealth that he was never able to truly obtain. Gretchen notices Walter wandering around, and it takes her and Elliot a moment before they finally recognize him. Walter gives the pair all of his money, and demands them to give the money to his family. They shake on it, but on the off chance they decide to do something else with Walter's earnings. Walter has a failsafe just in case. Don't move, don't. Don't dare move a muscle. You don't want them to think that you're trying to get away. Walter says that he's hired two of the best hitmen west of the Mississippi to keep tabs on Gretchen and Elliot in order to ensure that the money does reach his family. However, these two hitmen turn out to be some familiar faces. You know, I don't exactly know how to feel about all this. For real, yo? How do you feel now? Better. Walter learns that Jesse is still alive, forced to cook meth, and another stop is added to his adventure of redemption. We get this flashback scene of Jesse creating a wooden box in his youth, referencing the story he told back in Season 3. We return to the very first scene of the season, with Walter obtaining the gun and the ricin, and we get a flashback of Walter looking around the remains of his now-abandoned house. Later, Walter crashes a meeting with Lydia and Todd, offering to teach a new method of cooking meth that requires no methylamine. Lydia denies doing business with him, as she puts a 40th packet of stevia in her coffee. Walter goes out in the middle of the desert, testing out a machine that makes his machine gun go beep beep boop boop. After this, Skyler, relocated with the rest of the family into a safe house, gets a call from Marie, who tells her that Walter is back in town. However, after the call, it's revealed that Walter was listening the whole time. Walter wants to give Skyler and the family one final goodbye and gives Skyler the coordinates of the bodies of Hank and Gomez, telling her to use it to get a deal with the prosecutor of Skyler's case. Skyler breaks down crying, and Walter makes a stunning confession. You need to understand. I have to hear one more time that you did this for the family. I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. I was alive. It's the first time in the entire series that Walter has ever truly admitted his mistakes. While deep down, it was for the benefit of his family. It turned into an everlasting ego trip, one that Walter had so desperately longed for after a lifetime of mediocrity. In the end, the one person he truly made his money for was himself. Skyler feels almost relieved hearing this, after hearing nothing but lies from Walter for the past two years. Before Walter leaves, he gives a tearful goodbye to Holly for the last time, and watches as Junior walks to the house, satisfied. However, there's still one more matter that Walter has to take care of. Jesse. He drives to the compound, and parks his car right to the side of the clubhouse. Walter wants to make a deal, but they hold him at gunpoint, and Walter starts accusing them of violating the deal. Since they partnered with Jesse instead of killing him, Jack says he wouldn't partner with a rat, and tells Todd to bring Jesse into the clubhouse. Once he's in, Walter tackles Jesse to the ground, and while the rest of the gang starts to laugh, Walter presses a button on his car keys. <laughs> <laughs> In one of the most satisfying scenes in television history, the machine gun fires off, killing everybody in the wreckage. As Todd looks around the scene, Jesse chokes Todd with his handcuffs, killing him. Jack begs Walter not to kill him, promising to give up the location of the money, but Walter decides that he isn't interested. You wanna know where it is? You pull that trigger, you never... Walter and Jesse face off against one another, and Walter hands the gun over to Jesse, letting Jesse kill him once and for all. Say you want this! I want this. However, Jesse notices that Walter is mortally injured from the shootout. Then do it yourself. As Jesse walks out of the clubhouse, Walter answers a call from Lydia on Todd's phone. How are you feeling? Kind of under the weather, like you've got the flu. That would be the ricin I gave you. I slipped it into that stevia crap that you're always putting in your tea. Oh, my God. Goodbye, Lydia. As Walter hangs up the phone, Walter and Jesse give one final silent farewell 
as they part ways. Jesse escapes the compound in an El Camino, slamming through the gates and screaming in joy. <laughs> As Walter begins to succumb to his injuries, he walks into the meth lab, taking a trip down memory lane. He looks onwards like it's his pride and joy, as the police sirens get louder and louder. Walter never had many accomplishments in his life, but there was always one thing that he knew he did well. He knew he could rest easy, all of his loose ends tied up, his ends justifying the means. He puts his hand on a large vat, and collapses as the injuries become too much to bear. He lays on the floor, a slight grin on his face, as we get this amazing and iconic shot of the camera slowly zooming out, showing us the entire meth lab as multiple police officers investigate the scene. At the end of the day, despite being diagnosed with cancer, Walter White managed to go out on his own terms. It's one of the things he's wanted since the beginning, and he got it. That's it. That's the entire show. Only took a couple months, but hey, I did it. Season 5 really is one of the best runs in TV history. The story reaches some of the highest highs of any media ever conceived, and every single episode is a sight to behold. Never again will there be a show quite like Breaking Bad. I could say so much more, but to be honest, I think I've said all I've needed to. Thank you all so much for watching this series. I've spent a lot of time watching, editing, and writing, but I think it's all been worth it. Hey, I think I'm missing something. Oh yeah! Time for the bonus round! Here's every single episode of Breaking Bad ranked in order. I've been secretly giving every episode an alternate ranking, from 0 to 10. And now I'm gonna rank every single episode from bottom to top. Here is the official list! Breakage, 38 Snub, Grey Matter, IFT, Magical, ABQ, Hazard Pay, Down, No Moss, Greenlight, 737, Kafka S, Problem Dog, Cancer Man, Open House, Bug, and No Rough Stuff, Tight Deal, Caballo Scene, Nombre, Over Corner, Rabbit Dog, Pilot, 4 Days Out, ABQ, Bit by a Dead Bee, Bullet Points, Cats in the Bag, Moss, Shotgun, 51, Negro E. Azul, ICU, Box Cutter, Hermanos, Confessions, Buyout, Buried, Live Fear, Die, Blood Money, Sunset, Half Measures, End Times, and the Bags in the River, Gliding Overall, Granite State, Peekaboo, Dead Freight, Grilled, Salute, Fly, Say My Name, Phoenix, Crazy Hand of nothing till Hajali, full measure, one minute, Mandala, better call Saul, Felina, face off, Ozymandias, and crawl space. Alright, now we're good. There's nothing else for me to review in the Breaking Bad universe. Oh yeah. I'll see you all next time. Take care.